and good evening right camera yeah <laughs> just checking <laughs> after last week welcome to Dave's Tackle Box it's Sunday night again uh, it's actually the 30th of June 2013 and there's a police helicopter overhead if you listen very carefully you'll hear it I can hear it very loudly so I'm just hoping it's not uh, drowning me out <laughs> Um, it's as I say Sunday the 30th of June that makes it the day after the North East East Smokers knees fake meter and it was quite good and you can see a guy over there do you concur was it good I, I I concur I concur it was it was extremely good it was was most entertaining and uh, a delightful day was had by all we can't both be wrong can we not seeing anything about red and white stripes no red and black stripes I swear I heard somebody say get on with it let's get on with it okay So, yesterday was the knees up. It was really, really, really good fun. Now, I've, I've, I did take the camera, and um, and it, it it had the beginnings of a reasonably good VT. <laughs> 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 I, I had best intentions. I was going to interview some people, do all that kind of stuff. But, <laughs> you see, I'd like to say that it was just like professional integrity. I, I saw <laughs> Andy Sutton. What are you laughing at? I saw Andy Sutton going round with his, his, you know, slightly better camera than mine, if I admit it. And um, and and Marco was there with his radio mics and stuff, and they, they were interviewing people. And I thought, well, I don't want to tread on anybody's toes here. And I got slaughtered. <laughs> but I did, I did manage to point. I've got about four minutes of VT. That was that was what you shot before you realised where the beer came from. Say that again. That was what you shot before you realised where the beer came from. Yeah. I can't admit it. And then what I shot after that. I did actually shoot some stuff after that, but it was a bit wobbly. Just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like I say, I, I managed to get some VT. And I, I tell you what, you might think the edited results are crap. You should have seen what I started with. <laughs> They were shocking, and and um, you know, so so there's no interviews or anything in this. There's very little dialogue. It starts off with some dialogue until we get there, and then it I kind of went by the wayside. So I'll show. Shall I show that first? It'll set yeah, the scene. Sure. I'll set, the, God, set the scene. Set the scene. And um, and like if it, also it's worth a watch if you were wondering where Wally is. Oh, you've got camera. the girls on. Sorry. Have you got the girls on? Well, don't give too much away. I'll not give anything away. Watch out for the blue skirts. And let, let's just say, as I was editing this, I was careful. Mm. <laughs> I, saw you were, I saw where you were pointing the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we run it? Mm. Let's run it. See what you think of this, folks. going to watch this. Right, well, I'm just waiting for Steve to pick me up, which will be in the next ten minutes or so. I've packed all my stuff. There we go. Should be enough for a day trip. Get excited, man. Well, we've been on the road about two and a half hours now. That's Steve, Bulldog. 
who's very kindly given me a lift to the knees meet and uh, we're just passing the Sunderland turn uh, so I reckon we're probably about well, less than half an hour from the hotel now I reckon and uh, yeah it's getting good I've just seen a tweet and a picture there's already plenty of people at the meet and uh, we'll be joining them very soon so hello Steve <laughs> There's been a car crash, so we're stuck in traffic. So our estimates of half an hour were somewhat optimistic. <laughs> we're nearly there, eight miles to the hotel. Eight miles. Be there soon. There you go, and that, that was about all I got, really. <laughs> but he gave you a flavour, didn't he? And, and we know where Wally is. <laughs> well, I, could, I, I don't know about you, but I couldn't tell him apart. That, I, I honestly couldn't. Um, I, they, 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 for anybody that didn't, was wondering what the hell was going on, right, first of all, I'll just... Electric Vapour saying, what was with the Waldo girls? In the UK, it's not where's Waldo, it's where's Wally. I don't know why they're different. Waldo's just not a very well-known European name, I guess. But, um, so it's Where's Wally over here. Mm -hmm. um, and they were collecting for Alzheimer's research, I believe, weren't they? They were. They were. But they yes. also, uh, they were divided into teams and they had a series of challenges. So, now, I don't want to embarrass Steve, who gave me a lift, because he's a nice guy and he gave me a lift. But I believe... That they have a picture of him holding his boxer shorts in it's one not, hand. 
It's not just them that has the picture, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and uh th yeah like i say when i edited that i, I had to be a little careful <laughs> yeah, I, I like there was some stuff in there that could definitely be sued for all right <laughs> i don't know that you'd be sued for it but you'd probably get thumped for it yeah, well that, that that's yeah. that's a given <laughs> yeah. that's a given yeah but they, they, they were they were fun they, they, they were in high spirits I hope they made a fortune as well, because it took some goods that did. <laughs> well, yes, I mean, it, it, it was it was the way that they put the trousers back on Steve, I found particularly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all right, I happen to know his wife's at a Robbie Williams concert tonight, so he's safe enough. Safe enough, till it goes up on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, did you know you can, we can put our own uh, cover photo on, on YouTube now? Can we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that has potential, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, let's talk let's talk about the day. It, I, personally, I had a brilliant day. I'd had a crap week and I chose the occasion to have a bit of a blowout. And mm. it was good. But uh, how many were there in the end? 65. 65. Yeah, like, yeah. That sounds about right. 65. Sounds about the venue was absolutely spot on, so well done to Chris and the team for sorting that out. It was superb. It was, and uh, it was just great fun. It was just great fun. So, standout amazing. moments. It was amazing to see people from so far away, um, as far away as Brazil and Essex. Um, there was Lancastrians, there was Northumbrians, there was Yorkshireans, there was. Iranians from all over the place, even Middlesbrough, believe it or not. Um, yes. Just, just people <laughs> from all over. And it it kind of took you back when you, you walked from the bar, because there was two rooms, more or less, put aside for us. And when you walked from the bar into the larger of the two spaces, it was like going back in time. You see people sitting around, taking a drag, blowing a cloud, Drinking the drinks, eating a drink. It was just, it was lovely. It felt like being home. And yeah. I'm, I'm going to add to what you said. Uh, Chris, Kat, such an inspired choice. Brilliant place. Got to go there again soon, very soon. It was amazing. I had a cracking day. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, everybody, for organising. It was amazing. Just amazing. Well, he said can't really add to that <laughs> no, I, I, I echo everything it was just brilliant the atmosphere was great there was no moaning and uh, you know for, for, from the, the rest of the pub the, 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 the way they got organised or we were in what I think used to be the old smoking area it had the it's dartboard and everything in it that's normally a bit of a giveaway isn't it so we had our own like, little sort of corner and uh, and uh, it was it was a nice day wasn't it and there was uh, there was like the little veranda thing you saw a little bit of there Superb, super, yeah. and uh, I, I I don't know how you. I always manage this, but I always seem to come back from these meets with my pockets full of stuff. I've noticed that about you. Yeah, I've never worked it. Right. Let me uh, pop up uh, this picture here. <laughs> if I uh, switch to the TVS and uh, and reboot Strata like because it's crashed again. That's it. Yeah, mine be here itself. Perfect. There right. we go. This is this is yesterday's haul. <laughs> so I've got, I've got some great stuff in here which I'll be taking a closer look at in the coming weeks I would think but uh, I've got um, this drip tip and atty stand and I tell you what this works look at that suspending the whole lot by an RST screw threaded and everything that Mark made our very own Mark Jones so I bought that off him and uh, and these little, little atty stands which uh, I think I've got on camera there we go I haven't taken the, uh, the the protective screen off that one yet. They're brilliant. The RST I got off Cliffy. Cliffy. He, Cliffy. 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 He's uh, got a joke, Jay. Because <laughs> he um, apparently he over-drilled the hole on it and he got another one coming and he'd seen... Because my RSST, I can't use it. It doesn't fit anything. Right. Yeah. I bet it wouldn't even screw into this mod. The, the, this this atty holder to be honest with you 
it just fits nothing i got that anyway i got a couple of drip tips from madrun which i haven't used yet oh I'll i've got a bloody good fit those are those those uh holes I've got some brass drip tips yeah people people may remember me for months and months saying i want a brass drip tip i want a brass drip tip and now Ooh. i've got five all different ones how cool is that so, um yeah what else did i get i got some um some ribbon wire and I, and I must i must have another go with this because uh i've got some ribbon wire sort of up there and uh i tried it a couple of times i didn't get on with it and i haven't had time to sit down and play because i just couldn't get anything that wasn't like just totally burning well, if, if I may, if I may make a suggestion uh, with the ribbon wire, now that you're mentioning it, and the fact that uh, on the picture that I can see at the moment is that there's a hunk of uh, steel rope. Oh yeah. Oh man, the steel wick with a little bit of mesh around the top, and that flat ribbon console on top. Dear me, hell, that's a bit nice. I saw that you were setting up yesterday. I'll just put it on camera. This is this 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 steel rope. So the principle is that you put your mesh around this to make it wick. Just the top end. It's just, just the top just, end, yeah. Yeah, it's just just to stop the uh, the canthal from shorting out onto the uh, onto the steel cable, onto the steel rope. Right, it's, right. Because it's, it's, it, it, it will very quickly, and I mean, it was Mark. Mark so Jones the rope before. itself wicks perfectly. Wicks, wicks isn't the word. <laughs> if, you, if, if you whack the voltage up a little bit too high, seriously, you can get a fountain coming out the end of it. It's it's, <laughs> it's amazing stuff. I mean, on every device I've got, there's, there's a timeout. And I had um, an RSST with the, the, the cable rope, a little bit of mesh around the top, and then the, the flat can fall on. It would hold the button down on anything, and it just kept on going, waiting, no hot spots, no nothing. No drop off, no dry. It just whacking it out. I mean, seriously, it's good stuff. Um, Mad Dog brought it. Um, Mad Dog. Kudos, kudos. I mean, who the thunk? I'll That's be honest. I didn't see where it came from. I think you yeah. handed it to me. Mad Dog was handing it out. Cool. I mean, you know how how cool is that? That's so that pretty cool. I will say, you're probably going to need bolt cutters to get through it. It is wicked stuff to cut through so get your lengths right I i'll right. cover it on thursday i'll do it live on thursday because okay cool dead quick well i'm not going to get chance i don't think to uh to um to give that a go before next weekend probably so i'll watch thursday night show first okay mm. that's cool and um, other things what i got uh and i i believe you we all got one of these i think um, if I flick that back up and do that, uh, is one of the Cyan Mod strip tips, sort of like the one that we saw Graham making on Gary's show. Yes, indeed. And uh, we had a choice. There were some Ming-shaped ones, and uh, this one's like it's not quite straight. It's it's kind of to use Gary's term, it has a bit of a bell end <laughs> on, on the top of the shaft. Um, well, but, yes. <laughs> but it's mostly straight, and I tell you what, isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I haven't tried it yet. It's it's true stone. It's it is. It's described here as red with gold, matrix true stone, and it's just gorgeous, isn't it? I've got mine in use at the moment. Yeah. Are you finding yeah, yeah. it? Uh, I'll look on top of the uh, cover, and there it is. It's uh, <laughs> it's so smooth on the lips. It reminds me of something, smooth wise, but it, I mean the the, the pattern it, the patterning in it is gorgeous. It's um, pink conch is what it's called, and and it's just beautiful and really really comfortable on the lips. Like Excellent. It. I'll, I'll show you. Look, they're good. Put, I'll do the old hand behind too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You can see like it's almost like a marble effect, isn't it? Can I get it any closer? I should try and, and see. Is it focusing? Because I yeah, can't. that's working. That is gorgeous. That is really it's lovely, nice. isn't it? It's beautiful, and it it fits my mouth because apparently I've got a big gob. I hadn't noticed that, Dave. I was told it frequently uh, at the meet that the reason that I could not get that uh, I go F to work was because my mouth was too big and I was putting <laughs> it too full. My mouth, that is, not the I go F. 
Excellent. Right, well, if I just uh, flick to this camera, you know what would be better with this one. And uh, I also got this thing, which passed on to me by Chris. And this is uh, an iTaste, iTaste SVD, which is kind of a telescopic mod thing, um, which some people have described as fugly. I think it's I think it's utilitarian and kind of almost steampunk. Yeah, it is a little bit. It is a little bit. I mean, it's got writing all over it, and like the <laughs> this is actually engraved. There's little things telling you what all the buttons do. Now, I'll be yep. honest, all I've done with this because I haven't had chance today is uh, I pop this evod on the top of it and press the button, and every time I try to adjust the voltage or something, it's coming up with the message that says lock, like that. So I'm going to have to figure out what it does. It will tell you somewhere. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's probably written on the side of it. I would imagine it will be because just about the rest of War and Peace is. <laughs> well, I mean, it is quite bizarre. I'm not sure if I like it or not. Well, I'll have a play with it and I'll have a proper look at it in a, in a show in a week to come. Um, yeah, that was pretty much pretty much my haul, actually. Well, I, I was I was inveigled by many many people, I have to say, into voting on menthol. They're trying to turn me. I've got no idea why. That's so just wrong. Go, Dave, have you seen one of these atomizers? No, no. What what's what's that one? Oh, it's a fliggly bomb biddly dunk. Is it people? <laughs> what's it like? Any go? Oh, have a go. Have a go. Have a go. So you get you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you kind of you know you kind of just wrong in it. Just wrong. Go, You've got, to, you've got to have a drag. You've got to take it all in. And I was manly about it. And I, I, I behaved myself, but my God, we suffered this morning. Oh dear. I'm not, I'm not blaming the bubbles in the coke that was Pepsi. It's, uh, it was definitely the menthol what done it, Your Honour. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, the, the other thing that I've been playing with this weekend is I got these off the, the classifieds on UKV. They're, um, I'll hold it up there. It's, they're, they're the hybrid bases for the Fagatti. So this is the GGTS one. Oh, I've, I've, that was. Yeah, and then I got one for the GP Paps as well. But it, it doesn't actually quite fit flush on my GGTS. There's a gap. Well, I'm not sure why that is. But it works. Works great. It looks lovely. I wondered, mm. I, I, I was sat looking at that and I thought, hang on a minute, I'm sure I gave him a stealth top. You did, you did, and then this, this, this. I, ju I just dropped lucky, and I got the uh, GGTS and the GP Pap space. So, oh, Dave, before we before we shoot on, electric vapor, parrot flock, in other words, is saying that your uh, SVD is in lock mode. You need to hold both buttons down and it'll take it out of lock mode, and then you can fiddle and faddle to your heart's content. Hold both buttons down. Yeah, until it's out of lock mode. The up and down one, not the fire one. Otherwise, you'd burn your Oh, yeah, no, it's saying 2.5 amps. Just keep them held. And 5.0p. Keep them held, is it out? I'm not sure. No, I think I've just turned it back on again. That's what he's saying. He may have something here, you know. Mm. So now if I press the buttons. Now I can change the uh, the wattage. I assume yeah. P is power. It, P is power, yes. Well, that's about half what it needs to be. Well, I've said it before, yeah, I've said it again. We definitely have the best chat on the whole of the planet. All right, there's one I owe him. There you go. That works. Mm. That works rather well, actually. And I will RTFM. It's just I just got it home and then I had to work. Well, I probably wouldn't have read, I'd read the manual, actually. I'd have probably just asked in chat. You just did. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Manuals are for wimps. <laughs> oh, I don't know. They, they do come in handy. A bit of manual now and then. No, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> my back of the wears wally girls isn't it oh yeah it's almost worth running that again but probably not <laughs> just, right just the, just the wears wally bit yeah <laughs> let's see what we can do i'll, I'll do i'll do the uh the the uncut version one day 
Oh, I dare you. That's, that's, that's <laughs> probably the of an outtakes one. Wobbly wears Wally with the focus on the uh, butt cheeks. <laughs> right, well, I'm out of beer, which means it's time for a break. Absolutely. Let's have a break. Let's have a Kit Kat. And welcome back. Right, okay, so I, th I think we spoke about the meat there, didn't we? I think you know? we did. You know, we and, uh, you know, uh, I know that Marco was walking around with the camera, so uh, I understand he's putting something together for Tuesday night. He which is, is, yes. Which has probably got a bit more dialogue and thought and care in it than mine. <laughs> so that might be worth the watch. And, uh, and like I say, Andy was there uh, doing interviews for the SWAF campaign stuff. Um, so I saw him chatting with quite a few people there, so hopefully uh, we'll see some stuff coming out of there as well. But to move along swiftly, um, you must have noticed by now, and, and uh, to, to be honest with you, I'm talking to the guys watching this and the guys in chat, you probably know more about this than me at this stage. This Brussels protest, OK? Because I confess, I haven't had time to watch any VTTV this week. So, but I have seen comments on forums and we had a little sort of chat yesterday about it. And uh, I, this, the, yesterday there seemed to be some confusion about whether there were any sort of tickets left and stuff like that. So what I thought we'd uh, do first of all is, Dave, tell us what's happening on the 10th of July, isn't it? It is the 10th of July, yes. Tell us what's happening. Tell us what's happening with the ticket situation and what people need to do if indeed there are any left. And there I'll... are tickets left. There are tickets left. And uh, probably about I don't know, high twenties, I suppose. A lot of people have booked themselves onto the train. It's the uh, eight fifty eight Eurostar from St Pancras, the vaping train because vaping is allowed on it. Um, but we get on the eight fifty eight from St Pancras, and we arrive two hours later, but three hours if you watch the clock, uh, at around about twelve o'clock. And then we'll be going from there to the Rond Point Schumann, or the Round Point Schumann, if you read English. So that's easy for you, so. Uh, you, you'd like to think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, when we get there, there will be 2,000 balloons, which have been printed and sorted out and they'll be picked up. Um, we're going to blow them up and meet up with the, uh, the German contingent, the French contingent, the Belgian contingent, the Greek contingent, the Dutch contingent, and all of the other contingents that are descending upon the place. It looks as, as, it looks as though there's going to be three or 400 people there, which is amazing. Well, um, let's face it, that's going to have an impact, isn't it? One would think so, yes, because we are taking along with us on the train a BBC journalist, Lorna Stewart. Excellent. Three camera crews. Um, that's what's confirmed at the minute, and I'm working on a few other people as well, but I can't see anything at this time. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. That's fine. Might, might be a celebrity or two along with us. Brilliant. Um, now, if you want to go, it's this simple. If you can find your way down to St Pancras, then let me know 
I'll sort you a ticket out. Um, we've got high 20s left because we've left it open until midnight Tuesday and I know people need to see about whether they get days off work and stuff like that. So a lot of people won't have started thinking about it until this weekend. So Monday and Tuesday to get the days off work or whatever it is you need to sort out the trains. Um, you need to be at St Pancras no later really than 8.15. Stretch that the way at 20, I suppose. But it's it, what I completely forgot, what I didn't realise, it's an international almost a flight, except it's on wheels. So you've got to do the check-in as you would at the airport with a passport and stuff like that. Um, then once we get on the train, everybody that's the part of this particular bundle of people, we've got seats allocated all in the one carriage, uh, all more or less together. Um, there'll be interviews being done by both camera crews and by Lorna, so there'll be all of that kind of stuff going on. Eurostar are a shining example to every business that people are likely to go to in the whole of the UK because they encourage vaping. They actively allow it, and I have the feeling that the whole of the train is going to be just fogged from front to back with the number of people that are there. Um, <laughs> I, I can't make it. I am absolutely gutted. Um, I just cannot make it. I'm flying out to Switzerland the day before. And uh, I just cannot get off the hook, and I've tried. Um, but I, the, like you said, you, you, there'll be cameras. Yes. We, we'll get to see this after the event. Well, the, we, you might get to see it on the day of the event um, because it's going to be newsworthy. I've got a, a between now and, and the actual date, I've got press releases to put out and uh, media outlets to contact. I mean, we know the, the BBC already knows about it, so it'll be circulated in there, but I'm, I'll still be putting the press releases out. Right. And I'd like to think that we've timed it such that it could hit the one o'clock news in the UK. Now, I, I don't know what time news is in Germany and France and elsewhere, but I would like to think that we would be able to hit international news. Now, when I was talking to Jerry Stimson about it, because this is his idea, I, I claim no credit for this at all. Um, when Jerry came up with the idea, we were talking about numbers, and he said, how many do you think we'll get? I said, probably also 50. Oh, he said, if you get 50, it's newsworthy. If you get 150, it's really newsworthy. If you get more than that, it's bound to hit it. Now, right. that's what Jerry says, because he's been doing this an awful lot longer than anybody here. Indeed. He, he knows exactly what he's on about, and his media guy's all over it as well. So... The likelihood is, I, I'm thinking we're going to have massive numbers there. I can't even estimate how many. Well, I was reading on the UK Vapors Forum earlier, um, and uh, there are French Vapors and Belgian Vapors. I've seen the the uh, the emails coming in to the Vapor Trails TV inbox. Yeah. Uh, and there was a Belgian policeman there who was supporting us and had some good advice, I saw, on, 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 on where you can set yourselves up and everything. Yep. And, um, uh, it, you know, potentially there could be a lot more people waiting for you when you get there. I have the feeling that we're going to uh, meet an awful lot of international friends. Brilliant. Uh, and in the interests of not creating a, an international diplomatic uh, issue, uh, I didn't mention the Germans. We know there are some German vapours coming along as well. <laughs> there are. <laughs> That wasn't deliberate. <laughs> no, there, there, there's, there's going to be all kinds of people there. Um, and, yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm excited by the whole thing because we'll be able, I think, to make our voices... Oh, but I should also mention I contacted Rebecca Taylor and tomorrow I've got to contact her office to put all the time and details in. Rebecca Taylor's going to be joining us and she'll be passing this on to other MEPs. Fantastic. And the committee as well. So we'll look, and this is, I'm, I'm chuffed a little bit monkey nuts, I am. Well, it's exciting, isn't it? You know, I mean, oh. we've talked for a long time about how we can, you know, get people motivated to, to take some kind of direct action. And uh, it looks like we've pulled it off. Leanna Lawless is saying she wishes so much she could go. Why can't you, Leanna? Tell me. Look, Here's, here's how it's going to work. I've got some funding available. If people have trouble getting to London, if they can't afford to get to London, I can, I can sort that out. I've got some funding available. It's, there's not a lot of money lying about, but there is some. 
that I might be able to help people get to London if they really want to go. And if it, you know, if it's not an issue, we're getting time off work. If it's a money thing, then let me know, um, and we'll see what we can do. I'll, I'll see what I can scrape up and uh, and sort out. But there is a little bit of money there available to help people get down to London yeah. as well, if, if that's the kind of help that they need. It's it's too important not to do this. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, we we we. we really want to get as many people there as we can and make our voices heard and if you know if it hits all of the news outlets that's going to be such a, a big big tool it is i'm just, just going to chip in there dave sorry to interrupt you uh, uh liana's replied there and and and, and uh, with a very valid point uh, passport has expired and there's a few people saying the same um I, I, this might not be an option for everybody um, but you can get a next day to your door passport renewal done. Um, there are some some things that have to be in place. If you've got, a, I, I happen to, I'll tell. It's another story in its own right. I'll tell it another day. But I, I know this process intimately because I've seen it go wrong, <laughs> and I ended up ch- chasing a mail van up the M1 <laughs> to a secure head. mail facility. Yes. <laughs> Because and I had my passport in my hand with an hour to get to Birmingham Airport <laughs> for the flight. <laughs> but um, uh, you can uh, you can do it online if you've got like a photo driving license or your last passport was done. I think it is about ten years. So if your passport's recently expired, you'll probably find that you're part of the new system and they've got your photograph already authenticated. Yeah. On. The, uh, on 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 the, uh, the the passport agency computer system because uh, they're all linked up now. So you you, you can I th- I did it about must be about four or five years ago, and I think it cost a hundred and six pounds. So is it, the, the basic price of redoing your passport is about seventy quid, isn't it? And then the extra was to get it next day, and they do they do like a next day, a five day, which is a little bit cheaper, and then the regular one, which is cheaper again, where where it can take a couple of weeks. But uh, you know that might not be a solution for everybody. It does involve spending a bit of cash. But it, it might, you know, some people might want to look at that. Yeah, it's it, it's it's an option. It's there. If the exactly. If the only thing, it's an option, and it's there. Um, as I say, I, I've got it. I've got to say it as well. The tweets and private messages and emails that I've been receiving from all over the world, and I mean all over the world, expressing support and, and in all sorts of different ways. And, and there are some people that have expressed support in financial terms and they, they know who they are. I don't want to embarrass them. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to link everything up. And I, I tell you, it, it, it really warms the cockles of your heart. I mean, this is, it's such a vital thing. Not just for Europe, but for the whole wide world, because they'll all be looking at what's going on here. This will be the first yep. kind of proper legislative thing that, that affects millions and millions and millions of people. Um, and if we if we can get this right, if we can if we can persuade the Envy Committee to go in the right direction, if we can persuade the European Parliament to go in the right direction, that's going to domino across the rest of the world. Absolutely, that, it is. You get the feeling that the, that the regulatory authorities around the world, they're all waiting for somebody to make the first move. And it looks like the EU have put themselves into that position. Yep. Whatever whatever the EU come up with is going to strongly influence the FDA and the other regulatory authorities around the world. It, it also Nobody seems- wants to get it wrong, is the point. And the EU are being quite brash. They are. So they're quite uh, happy to let them do the groundwork and then say, well, that's what they did in Europe. That's, that's exactly it. And, and it'll also send a message to the World Health Organization because if it can get this right within the guidelines that the World Health Organization set out thus far, because it's quite nebulous really what the WHO has come up with in many ways, um, it sets a precedent there as well. Which yeah, means yeah. That the WHO almost has to say, well, look at what they've done in Europe. Yes, so we've we've really got the help, the MAPs over there and the Council of Ministers. We've really got to help them get it right. And you know, I'm with Clive Bates on this one. It, it, it it's very very straightforward, really. And and the compromise amendments and, and so on that have been put forward, we're going to be there to support them and and do it in a way that 
I think it's going to have an effect because I can't think of any other protest, demonstration, whatever you want to call it, where it would be graphically illustrated the way this is. I mean, effectively, this is 2,000 lives being taken by a wrong decision every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. demonstrate to that effect it, it, it hopefully it will do what we need it to do um, and I'm, I'm excited by the whole thing I'm buoyed up by the whole thing it's making me feel more optimistic and, and I'm so looking forward to going across there I mean Chris in uh, in chat has said there might be only 20 or 30 people coming from Germany that's not an only that's fantastic that's, that's, that's fantastic you know and, and if you know I mean the, the you know well, let, let's think, if, if, if all of the sort of nearby uh, EU member states sent 30 or 40 people, you're there. Oh, if they all sent 30 or 40 people, all the nearby ones, the ones that, all the ones that surround Belgium, would be looking at probably a couple of hundred people. Easy. 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 Before we got there. Fantastic. Brilliant. It's Dave, uh, what I'll do is, because that, that's a cracking time to, uh, to take a break... Uh, what I'll do is I'll invite chat. If you've got any sort of specific questions, uh, get them into chat whilst uh, the ad's running, and we'll we'll do our best to answer them when we come back. See you in a couple of minutes. Cloud Nine Baby sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back. Okay, so uh, during that break there, uh, I was trying to keep uh, track on a couple of the questions that came through, uh, and Dave snuck off to fetch the tickets. So and there's one, and uh, if I put you full screen for that, Dave, I reckon they'll probably be able to read that quite comfortably. There we go. That's the ticket going out. It's Excuse the eight fifty eight from London St Pancras. Um, getting into Brussels at twelve oh five. That'll be Brussels time. So. That's eleven oh five, really. <laughs> um, uh, so, where do people, if they're if they're flying into Brussels, or if they're uh, making their own way, uh, or indeed live in Brussels, where do you meet up? We've been advised that the place to go is Rond Point Schumann. Let me spell that out. It's R O N D dash P O I N T. Then Schumann is S C H. U M A N. Rompoint. Um, yes. Rompoint Rom Rom Schumann. Rom. It's got an O in. It means roundabout. <laughs> the Schumann roundabout. It's it? the Schumann roundabout. That's what you want. Yeah. Yes. Now, Liam, Liam D. Baker has just said in the chat it says no smoking on the ticket. Yes, there's no smoking, but there's vaping. There's yeah. Vaping. Yeah. We've checked it out. We've checked it out with you, Ross Star. And uh, when they said, yes, you can, I said, I think I love you, and I think I do. They are a, a shining example. Uh, the return tickets, uh, so it, it's carriage five, coach five, going out. On the return, it's coach 16. And again, 
I hope that's level, is it? Let's get you up on screen there, Dave. That looks fine. I can read that. It says you'll leave Brussels at 18.56. That's local time. You'll get back into London at 8 o'clock. Three minutes yep. to 8. So that's where we're at. That's where we're going. Um, and again, to make up at the Ronde Quoi Schumann, or the Schumann roundabout. Uh, and it'll be, it'll be, well, that's where everybody needs to get there. If you fly in out, my understanding is that Ryanair lands at uh, Brussels South, uh, yep. which apparently is, is 46 kilometres south of Brussels itself. It's a trek that I've done. And it's a pain in the ass. Now, Ryanair do run a coach. Uh, that, As you know, they tend to use the remote airports in yes. the European capitals. There's normally a Ryanair bus that will then take you into the centre. Uh, make sure you arrive plenty of time before. Because, uh, you know, it's quite a trek. Um, obviously, if you can fly in some of the other airlines, the other economy airlines like Flybe and stuff, they're not quite as cheap as, uh, as Ryanair. But, you, you know, you're probably looking to get change out of 100 quid. If you choose to fly, and then you can get into uh, the main Brussels airport, which is, which is a bit of an easier ride. But you still need a taxi or a bus once you get there. The train is definitely the easiest way to do it if you can manage it. Yeah, that's what I've been told. Um, the advice I've got from Rebecca Taylor it is the most convenient and uh, the greenest, apparently, uh, which is yep. all good. Um, that's a fair point. It is. Um, and we know for a certain fact if you're going on the train, you can vape. It's the vape train. I'm not going to do the funky vape train song again tonight. I think that would just be wrong. I did it on Thursday. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, get hold of me. If you want a ticket, let me know. You can't get one on the same train now. Apparently it's sold out. Get hold of me. Info at vapertrails.tv. There you go. Info at vapertrails.tv. Or tweet me, either way. Uh, pretty much. I think we've answered most of the questions there. Uh, vaping Point Liz. Hiya, Liz. Nice to see you there. Um, so are you popping the balloons all in one shot or in waves? Well, what I want to do, I've, I've been thinking about this and thinking about the, West, the best way of doing it. And I think if we can get a Brit and a German and a Frenchman, woman, French person, what, I don't know what the generic term is, um, and one from each of the nationalities, kind of front and centre. And we do, that's a British life gone, that's a German life gone, that's a French life gone, that's whatever, da-da-da-da. And then everybody sort of goes... <laughs> and it's, it's like a crescendo. Um, we will, we have already informed the, the Brussels police, but I'll make sure they're re-informed and that they understand these are not guns, the balloons. <laughs> yes, yes, good tip. <laughs> yeah, we've actually, I've got to be absolutely certain of that. Um, and I would hope what I would like to do is have an MEP pop the first one. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Because, yeah. I mean, let's, that, that's the money shot for the camera crews, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. Um, MVL says, what time are we meeting there? Uh, I would say 12.30 at the Rond Point Schumann so that we can kick off at 1300 Brussels time. So 12.30 at the Rond Point Schumann to kick off the whole thing at 1300 Brussels time, one o'clock in the afternoon in Brussels time. Um, I, that's, that's pretty much where we're at at the minute. Uh, this is all, it's really happening kind of at the last minute. Uh, but bear in mind, we may need to do something like this again in October. And we'll have longer to organise it then. Yeah, yeah. Who knows what we can come up with by then. Well, yeah, to an extent, this is a proof of concept, isn't it? To a large degree. And, Chris uh, and Rebecca Midge Dog. Chris and Rebecca. As many as... If I, could get, if I could get 10 MEPs to pop balloons before everybody else does, I would do that. I really seriously. Um, everybody that's supporting it, we'd like to see there. So, yeah. Sorry, Dave, I put across you there. No, not, not at all, not at all. You carry on. Uh, there's a question here. Um, uh, I think we covered it. I'm just catching up, just just making sure people know if where to meet up. And that's at the Rond Point Schumann. Where that is in Brussels, it's somewhere near the Parliament, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not quite on the Parliament steps, 
It's uh, in in the the videos that we've seen on Swaff. I believe it's that green grassy area that's that's around it. Yeah, that's where it would be. Um, and that's where you do protests, basically, isn't it? That's where they're always held. So that yes. shouldn't upset anybody. Yeah, pretty much. Excellent. Uh, we've answered questions about the carriages. It's carriage five on the way there and sixteen on the way back. That's right. Um, just looking through, I think we've pretty much answered all the questions there. There were some questions about passports and stuff, and you've got to go to the passport agency to to answer those. Um, you know, and what what you can and can't travel on. Um, you do need a passport. Uh, it's got nothing to do with Eurostar or even Brussels. It's to do with Britain not being part of the Schengen Agreement. So you do have to go through immigration control as you go out and as you come in. Yes. Um, Seven UK has asked what colour the balloons would be. They're black. I thought they were red. No, they're black. They're black? Yeah. It's a good job nobody asked me then, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, we, again, we took advice from people that know about these things because it, it needs to be camera friendly. And apparently, black is the most camera friendly. Okay. So that 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 makes that's good advice, you know, to, to do it in black. It just makes life sensible. That sounds good. Okay, cool. Well, if if any more questions crop up between now and the end of the show, guys, we'll do our best to spot them. Um. What I want to do now is is we picked up a few headlines, didn't we? Uh, oh, there's yes. one that, that, that came out yesterday while we were all enjoying ourselves at the knees meet. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to knock you off the screen for a second there, Dave. No problem. While I find my browser. And the first one that I've just popped up on the screen there that you probably can't see just yet is a headline from The Grocer. Uh, I, I found this link on uh, UK Vapor. Somebody posted it up there. And oh, the headline yeah. is that e-cigarette brands Enjoy and Nicolites get behind the MHRA plans for medical regulation. Mm. And I won't bother reading it all out because the headline pretty much says it all. I better just accept the cookies. There we go. <laughs> um... It's, it's basically saying Enjoy, the market leading brand in the US, which launched here in April, is backing the Medicines and Healthcare, Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency's plan to regulate the industry by 2016, blah, blah. We fully support the objectives of the MHRA and their efforts to create the highest standards for the electronic cigarette category, said Enjoy Senior Vice President International Bo Eckberg. Mm. Enjoy has always been an advocate of the medical community. <laughs> They're owned by a tobacco company, yeah? Uh, <laughs> and nope. fully supports research into the scientific understanding of the electronic cigarette category. Ad infinitum. Mm. Okay, so I'll get your take on this in a second. I'm going to give you mine first. And my take on this is this is exactly what we told the Envy Committee would happen. The driving electronic cigarettes into the hands of the tobacco companies. Regulation doesn't frighten them because a regulated product suits them down to the ground. Do you agree? Well, Enjoy's had $75 million just pumped into it from one of the guys that founded Facebook. Um, they, they are not yet part of any major tobacco company that I'm aware of, but they have been courted by, uh, who was it now, was it Altria, was busily uh, making advances towards them, that's Philip Morris in other words. I remember the conversation we had, I actually thought that had happened, but I could, no, have, I could no. easily be wrong, yep, yep. It, you know, they, they, they threw the schmoozing party, but it didn't happen. However, uh, it looks as though they're also licensing the Enjoy King technology to Playboy. Ah, now I saw the Playboy, I saw the headline of the Playboy yes. thing. Because uh, yes. Jemima was showing it me yesterday at the meet. Yes. That's the Enjoy, is it? Yes, uh, it looks very much like the Enjoy King. Right. Now, the bit that gets to me about all of this is that when they went and, and gave evidence to the Envy Committee and, and sat and talked the WIMCO as well and everybody else. They didn't want medicinal regulation and all of a sudden they're back in the MHRA. And I'm sorry, 
but you can't have it both ways. Yep. Now, up until now, uh, I had I had been quite a, a fan of the Enjoy King. But I'm here to tell you, if you think they're going to get the Enjoy King through, they need to think again, because Jeremy Mean has already said there is nothing on the market today that is good enough to become a medicinal electronic. Indeed he did. Indeed he did, but... At the end of the day, if they throw enough money at it, they'll get it through. Oh yes, I think with uh, you know five million quid, that should see the uh, the trials and everything sorted out. Although exactly. I have to say the battery life on those things, as you well know, dear, is despicable. Uh, yes, yes, I, I still have the remnants of one around somewhere. Yeah, and I, I was talking to some folks up at the knees, mate, that had also tried them. Uh, yes, so you can get them in Sainsbury's now, apparently. Apparently so, yes. Peter from MVL, not TC, who had the stand there. Nice, uh, nice lad. He's brilliant lad. Yeah. And he, he said his lasted, I think he started a half ten with it. Right. Uh, and using all kinds of other stuff during the day, I think it was about seven o'clock, it gave up the ghost. And he gets the odd drag now and then. Yeah. Um, but seriously, the battery life on him is, is absolutely piss potical. Uh, despicable, sorry. <laughs> um, it ain't uh, 20 fags, is it? No, not a, and they're claiming forty. Yes, and no, it's it just isn't isn't good enough. As for Nicolites, well, I don't know what they think they're going to get through, but they're a hundred percent certain that Nicolites will gain the necessary license well before twenty sixteen. Said MD Nikhil Nathwani. We began the licensing process some time ago, and we're a long way down the road to complying with all the MHRA requirements. Interesting, though, that they're not sharing what those requirements are. Well, I was going to say, I mean, because officially there are no MHRA requirements defined no. at this stage, are there? Not, not that I've seen. That they can't be. They're not classed as medicinal products yet. So, so no. they're, they're, they're essentially a new category. So the MHRA must be winging this. Well, it, it, they're not classed as medicinal by function, but they are classed as, or they can be classed as medicinal by presentation. Right. I suspect that what that means is that they are working on the dosimetry of them all. I'd better explain that. You know, when you go to take a drag, they'll have a standard length of drag, and they'll yeah. have a machine there to test it. And the machine will take, let's for argument's sake, say a four second drag. Right. That will be measured, and every drag that you take from start to when the little light on the, the, uh, the battery starts flashing, every drag will have to deliver exactly the same amount of nicotine. Right. Because that's what the NHR will be looking for. Right. I'm not entirely certain that anything that's going to conform to that kind of regulation is going to really do the job. So they'll have done this whole, how many drags equals a cigarette, because we need to know that that's the case. And, you know, how many yeah, drags yeah. will you out of the battery, when will it flash, is there going to be a counter in? I can't see this happening cheaply, not in any way, shape, or form. But I've got to say, if they want to do medicinal by presentation, i.e. claiming it is a quit smoking device in the terms that the MHRA accepts, yeah. then... Yeah, good on them. But I'm telling you this, there's no way on the face of this planet I'm going to buy one, and I suspect I'm speaking for all of the viewers as well. I um, My personal view on that is that they sold us out and they can stick them up their arse. That's, that's, that's my considered saying. opinion. Yeah, that's, that's I worked on that. Yeah, that, that, that'll do. <laughs> yes. Dave, <laughs> we've run out of time. Have we? We have run out of time. Um, but before I go, I've got to do one thing that I promised. I don't normally do this, uh, but I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to look at the camera and I'm going to say hi to Tracy Bell because I promised I would. Hi, Tracy. Lovely to meet you again yesterday. Say hi to Tracy. Hi, Tracy. How are you doing? There you go. Right. <laughs> that should suitably embarrass her. Uh, and it's time for us to go. Dave, can I say thanks very much for joining me? Uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed the show as much as we've enjoyed presenting it again. And um, we'll speak several times uh, in the uh, in the before you go to Brussels. But uh, fantastic uh, that what you're doing there. Uh, I know you gave the credit to Jerry there, but somebody had to bring this this to the people. 
and you've done a cracking job so i hope it goes brilliantly thanks dear there's thanks. a lot of riding on it, it and it, yeah. uh, to everybody else out there thanks for watching and good night bye